Well, greetings. I haven't worked on the bike in a couple of days. Uh, and the garage is a mess. I haven't cleaned up the tools. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the kit itself. Uh, uh, the kit is Chinese made. Um, uh, over here on the table I've got the battery pack sitting. Uh, and this is the rack that they send you. And the, these are the uh, the very limited instructions. And there isn't much to it really. And uh, it's not a very expensive kit. I think the whole thing, even with shipping, came to oh, maybe around 280 bucks. So it's uh, it's a pretty good deal. I, sh I should talk a bit about the performance of the uh, kit. They rate it as a, they call it 2020 and uh, that means that supposedly it'll go about 20 miles and run at about 20 miles per hour. Uh, I don't think it, uh, I mean it depends on how much weight. You know I'm weighing in at about 210 and with my boots and my pants and uh, you know, heavy shirt and helmet and all that. I'm probably more like about 225. And the bike itself, uh, it was probably about 70 pounds with the uh, Roadmaster, and I suspect this uh, giant will weigh in maybe 10, 12 pounds less. So you're getting pretty close to 300 pounds when I'm on it. Uh, and I think that's expecting a lot for it to go 20 miles at 20 miles per hour and not pedaling or anything. Uh, the, the way I think it works, and it should work, is that it's really a pedal assist. And uh, if you want something to get on and just, you don't have to pedal and you just uh, uh, turn the throttle thing and ride, you, you probably ought to buy a motor scooter or something if that's what you want. If you start out on the bike and you don't pedal at all and you just immediately use the electric power, you're going to wear down that battery pretty fast. Uh, so they recommend that uh, uh, you pedal and get it going and then then you use the electric. With the electric, if I pedal and then you know turn on the electric to cruise a little bit and pedal some more, uh, uh, I can get a pretty good range with it I think. Uh, and, and as far as the uh, top speed goes, uh, it will do 20 miles per hour, I'm pretty sure. And if I've got it in high gear and I'm pedaling along pretty good, I can get it up to, you know, 25, maybe even more. So, uh, uh, and here at the ocean, you have a lot of wind. And there's been days that have been so windy that I, I just won't go out on a bike. And that's where the electric really comes in nice. Because I can pedal a bit and run the electric, and man, I just shoot right through those winds. So, if you use them properly, they're they're really a neat thing. Okay, so, the next filming that I do, uh, will actually be working on the bike again. Um, finally back in the uh, workshop. It's been a few days. I got cleaned up enough to to work in, and uh, had to pay one last visit to the old. Uh, Roadmaster and pulled off some parts, handlebar, and uh, I'd already pulled this off earlier. The uh, handlebar stand, I pulled off the kickstand and the chain. And what I'm going to do next is install the uh, handlebar stem and handlebar onto the uh, giant bicycle. And the uh, handlebar stem. And the handlebars on the uh, giant now. That's that's not the final height adjustment by any means, but it will enable me to finally turn the giant over and uh, start working on the rear wheel. I guess I really didn't want to run flat bars on this thing, but it's all that I've got at the moment. I would much rather have had some bars like this. That's on the handmade bike, but I, I don't want to pull those off of this bike, so maybe later on I'll pick up some junker bikes and 
that will have a nice set of handlebars on them. So I've got the giant uh, turned over and hopefully it's a little more stable. I've got a bag on the seat and rags tied around the handlebars so the cement floor doesn't scratch everything up. So now I can get started on the putting on, building the rear wheel and putting it on. If you remember I painted the rim from the old uh, Roadmaster and these are the guts here that I tried to install an aluminum wheel and didn't work so uh, my next shot is to break down that aluminum wheel and install that whole setup onto this rim. Well I've got the uh, uh, wheel laced up here and I've uh, pre-stressed it and now I have to uh, I'll install the uh, bearings and the uh, axle and that in it. And once that's done, I can put it on the back of the giant and spin it and see how far off a true I am and do whatever I need to do to tighten it up just a bit more if it needs it. Well, it's another day. Uh, I got up this morning and brewed up a pot of coffee and I came out to the shop and uh, assembled the uh, axle and uh, set up on this uh, wheel. I cleaned the sprockets and I repacked the bearings and uh, then I put it on the uh, back of the giant and spun it and it was way out of true as I thought it would be. It was just pretty far to the left so I tightened up the right spokes and uh, I've been messing with it for a while. I've got it as good as I can get it. Maybe someone who's better at truing wheels could get it a little better. It wobbles but it was wobbling uh, before when I had it on the uh, well, it was originally on the uh, Roadmaster. And, uh, the best I can do is get it to be sort of an even wobble. Uh, and it's just a temporary wheel until I can get something better. The main thing is that I've got a good frame now. And even though those forks are much heavier than I would like to have on there, they're not anywhere near as radical as the uh, Springer setup was. So... Uh, one of these days I'll find a better wheel and put it on the back, but uh, I have a few things I have to do before I actually um, put the tire on the wheel and, and put it on the uh, back of the bike. I have pulled the uh, rear derailleur off of the Giant uh, to clean it up. It's pretty rusty and took some sandpaper to it and knocked off some of the worst of the rust and I'm oiling it up. One of the sprockets is on it is running kind of tight and I wanted to do that before I install the uh, uh, rear tire. It's a lot easier to work on if you don't have a wheel on the back. Now that I have the uh, rear derailleur off, uh, I'm trying to repair the uh, shifting mechanism that controls it. Uh, the original mechanism on the Giant and it, it doesn't look like it's going to go. It's just way too rusty to to get it to go. Here's the setup down here. It's just a mess. So I'm going to pull the uh, shifting setup off of the uh, uh, Roadmaster and uh, see if I can couple it up to the original uh, rear derailleur on, uh, on this thing and see if I can get that to work. Got the rear derailleur back on the Giant and it was uh, it was pretty rusted. It's moving free now. This one is moving free. It was tight before. Uh, and I've got the shifting mechanism and cable uh, from the uh, Roadmaster. It's all installed. Uh, so now I can put the rear wheel on. And it looks like this front derailleur is as bad as the back, so I'll probably end up replacing uh, 
the cable and shifting mechanism on it also. And, uh, but the next thing is to put the rear tire on and hook up the rear brakes once I've got it on.